So just like every other lot in North America, ours is looking pretty bleak. And out of the six vehicles we bought last week, four of them were duds. So one of the six vehicles that we bought last week was this 2013 Hyundai Elantra Coupe. And well, it was one of the ones that wasn't a dud. We did end up putting four tires and some brakes on this thing. Nice little car, really good shape, but we didn't have to spend a whole lot of money on it. The 2014 Chevy Cruze, well, other than the regular Chevy Cruze stuff that we will have to do, and I'll leave that video right up here, uh, four tires and a window regulator on the driver's side window. And well, that's where it all ends. Uh, the next four vehicles, well, we've got some troubles with each and every one of them. Like this 2016 Kia Sorento behind me. Four cylinder all wheel drive, other than the four stabilizer links, it has no four wheel drive. This tends to be a common problem on the 2013 to 2018 Santa Fe's and Sorrentos. The four wheel drive actuator, otherwise known as a viscous coupler, uh, quits working. And most people would be unaware that the four wheel drive wasn't working on their vehicle um, because it's hard to tell on these all wheel drives. We did have uh, a post sale inspection done on this. They said it worked, but in fact, they did not check it properly. When we got it back here, we put it up in the air, turned the traction control off and locked in the four wheel drive. Once it's up in the air, we put it in gear and we spin the tires up. The front tire spin, the drive shaft spins, the rear axle does not. That's a sure sign that your four wheel drive actuator or viscous coupler isn't working. We got in touch with the auction and the selling dealer is going to work with us. They gave us enough money back so that we could purchase the unit and we're going to switch it out ourselves. 2014 Kia Forte. Not a bad little car. Everything seems to be good on it other than it's a little bit dirty and well, it's got a small tick in the engine. Again, these Kia Fortes and some of the Hyundai Elantras with the 1.8 were common to have a ticky engine uh, from the factory. And this thing has 174,000 kilometers. That's over 100,000 miles. And guess what? We had it up to Kia. They've investigated it. And they're going to replace the motor for us. So one of the things you should never hesitate on is Kia or Hyundai's reliability. Because anytime we've ever had an issue like this, the dealers have always looked after us. Even though we're not the end purchaser of this car, we're just going to turn around and resell it. They're going to look after it for us. Why? Because the dealers know that they're going to get paid and Hyundai and Kia both know they had an issue. 2014 Chevy Sonic, LS 1.8 manual transmission, five speed. It was the only version of these cars that came with a five speed. Well, it has a very growly transmission. Put the clutch in, doesn't go away, not an input shaft. Something inside the transmission is bad. So again, we called the auction. The selling dealer is going to give us $800 back on what we paid for this so that we can replace the transmission. Even though we're gonna do it ourselves, it's still gonna cost us probably about a day's worth of work in the shop. And the last vehicle that's not on the lot at the moment because uh, dad took that home last night when he went for a drive. Photo bomb by Kitty again. Is a 2012 Chevy Malibu with a 2.4, uh, no power. It's got, it's got codes for cam crank correlation. Uh, there's a couple of sensors up top that will activate your variable valve timing. And that's generally the code because it did say, I think bank one. So we replaced that, this code's still there. When those codes stick around and they're prominent, can't get rid of them. Chances are we're up against a timing chain situation. Timing train is probably worn to the point where it's not reading accurate timing on those cam and crank gears, uh, sensors, sorry. And uh, so I'm not sure what we're gonna do with that one, but uh, because it's a 2012 and it's over on the mileage, uh, there's nothing that the auction can do for us, unfortunately. Uh, how long will the timing chain last on that? Uh, they'll probably last a very long time. We've had several of those cars in the past um, that we have driven ourselves that the uh, timing chains or that those codes have been present and never an issue. There's no noise. Uh, it's just very lacking in power and the, uh, the codes are there, the check engine light. So uh, as most of you know, most GMs after they get to a certain age, the check engine lights come on and they never go off. Uh, so this little light of mine, we're gonna let that one shine. Um, and I think we're just gonna sell it at a reduced price and hopefully uh, somebody get themselves a pretty decent car for a good price. Now this is one that I bought this week. This is a 2010 Dodge Grand Caravan, 222,000 kilometers on it. Uh, 
she's rough. In fact, it's a POS. I bought it for one reason, one reason only. Uh, the inspection is still good for another whole year on this van. It's dirty, it's missing some trim pieces, it's got some rust, but we're gonna go over it mechanically to make sure that everything is good. We need a people hauler for when we go and we buy six vehicles at the auction. We can load seven guys in here, head to the auction and pick them up. Last week we had to make two trips on a uh, 250 kilometer one way trip. So it's a thousand kilometers that we ended up putting on um, because we didn't have a van to take enough people. So because this is a 2010, it does have the old 3.3, uh, the gutless V6. And well, like I said, it's a POS. We're gonna uh, clean it up. We're gonna fix up the, the vehicle mechanically uh, as long as it's not gonna cost us a fortune uh, because you know it's a thousand dollar van at best. Uh, we just want it to get us through the next year. We don't want to tie up big money into a, 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 a really nice newer van that we're just going to put some miles on uh, because it's tying up cash. Thousand bucks, we maybe we spend a thousand dollars on it, and if we get a year or two out of it, hey, it's money in the bank. So guys, just know that when you go to a used car lot and you want to pick up a used vehicle, uh, don't be afraid to ask the history that the dealer knows of. I'll have no problem telling people that we've got a brand new uh, engine, that Kia Forte, or that we've got the brand new viscous coupler in the Kia Sorento, that we put a transmission in the Sonic, because any of those issues that may have been prevalent in the past, well, we've bought some time for the next customer who's going to own these vehicles so that they don't have to worry about it. Will that deter me from buying Kia Fortes, Chevy Sonics, or Kia Sorentos? Absolutely not, because I know that if these things are declared properly and if they're done through the proper channels you will get looked after sometimes the selling dealers don't want to work with you but the auctions have what's called arbitration so that you can fight it and they will be forced to look after you if the problem costs more than 750 dollars it's kind of a standard thing throughout north america at least that uh, when you arbitrate a vehicle if the repairs cost over 750 you're going to get looked after that's going to do it for this little used car lot update some of you have been asking about uh, some of the things that we do around here. And well, I figured it's, maybe it's about time I give you a little bit of an update on some of the things that's been going on here at the shop. Uh, business has picked up a bit. Last week we sold several vehicles and it was the first time in a long time that September uh, has been a busy month for us. Ever since everything that's been going on, uh, things have been quiet. So we've been doing our best to stay afloat and uh, look, we're having almost uh, a record month this year uh, based on everything that's been going on. So guys, stick around to uh, the channel because we're on our way to 10,000 subscribers. We're almost there. We're only about a thousand and a bit away. Uh, with your help at sharing out these videos and making sure that people understand that it's a very entertaining channel and we've got lots to offer. With projects like my old Chrysler Cordoba, my lifted Grand Marquis, my autocross Yugo, and Dale the truck. So if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please go ahead and do so now, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you guys. God bless.